Nau mai hoki mai ki a The Fold e mihi ne ko Duncan Grieve talking wa. Uh, this is this is my second big fancy New Zealand uh, film presence uh, director now in uh, in the past few weeks. It's Rachel House who just a crazy CV, um, largely known as an actor, but has has directed theatre before. You know, roles in Eagle vs Shark and and Boy and Hunt for the Wilder People and Thor, uh, a big role in Moana. Just just uh, and as voice talent and that her voice, which is, it's, it's very distracting to listen to it, um, as an interviewer. So just basically like a first, first ballot hall of fame of, of our film community, uh, in New Zealand, but also someone who got their start in, um, in theater and, and, and has directed there as well. So that when she came to direct her debut feature, the Mountain, you know, I, I, this was not foreign to her. Uh, the Mountain will be out by the time uh, this comes out. I do urge you to go and see it, particularly if you've got got kids. It's it's absolutely, it's a really fun film to watch as an adult, but uh, I went and saw it with my 10-year-old and 14-year-old, and, and the 10-year-old is basically the same age as the, the three leads, and... There's, there's that you know was just completely enthralled by it. it, and it feels like, it feels like it embodies the, a kind of a, a universal story, but but through a very much an Aotearoa lens, and uh, and because Rachel has spent so much time acting with kids, coaching coaching kids to act, and you can just see that she drew like there are three just newly minted stars uh, in in the three leads, four leads, um, including uh, the. Taranaki Moanga, but you already knew about that one. The the, the three uh, young leads uh, just give incredible performances, and um, and it's hard to imagine that uh, many others could have got out of them what what Rachel did. So we're we're largely talking about about her career, but particularly about the mountain, about what it's like to to be, become a director and. The, the way that the story, which was originally written uh, by Tom Furness, it sort of journey, the, the way that the, the two of them sort of met in the, the middle or the way that she picked up the baton in a way and, and it turned into the, the film, which is it is now, you know, about how they released it, about how they, the you know, filming down at Taranaki, um, what the sort of the protocols and the, the way that they made the relationship of the three and the the journey to it that is the core of the the film, how, how that all worked out. Um, and then we talk about, I guess, the way that the three leads embody different aspects of or, or sort of veins of New Zealand society and and the fact that it represents a more hopeful uh, vision for, I guess, race relations than we've experienced this past summer. Uh, and... And then how it relates to the current moment in New Zealand sort of screen productions where on some level it feels like things have never been brighter creatively but also there's never been a darker cloud in terms of the the funding of that and, and Rachel's got some really interesting things to say about that. The The interview happened at the end of the promotional cycle. She's just basically been on the road for, for over a week screening this, this film around the country and I feel feel bad for her that she had to walk into the fold with me with my sort of multi claws long ass question. So I don't know how much of that will stay in the edit, but I, I really um <laughs> went went too big and, and too long. So apologies in advance to to you, the listener, for that and, and to Rachel for bombarding her on a Wednesday afternoon with that. But um look, I really enjoyed the the conversation and I think most of the time she did too. Anyway, it was a really fun episode. Uh, This is Rachel House, director of The Mountain on the Fold. Tēnā koe, Rachel House, welcome to The Fold. Tēnā koe, Duncan, I'm a fan of The Fold, so it's very nice to be here. I was just saying I'm a bit nervous because you you tend to go you seem to go quite deep with the people you speak to. Well, I I, I can do. Actually, I think my main problem is just sort of gushing a bit much, so (laughs) which will be hard to avoid here. Oh. 
But we're we're recording this the day before, like uh, the the release of the mountain, and I just kind of wanted to just get a little emotional register of, of how you are right now. Well, I I am a bit um, buggered. But, uh, we we have been on the road since. Well, I went to Taranaki on the Sunday um, before the premiere, which was last Tuesday, and um, just to sort of ground myself. But it's been an incredible journey with the kids and their parents and our producers and the publicity team. And we've had a really lovely time connecting with community, um, which is so important. And I think, you know, I think a lot of those big films tend not to do. So it's, and it, this film is so very much about this country. And um, so it's been really lovely going into these these smaller places. But yeah, it, it's been a lot. I think the, my thing is I get I do get quite socially anxious. So being around big groups of people every day has taken its toll. Um, but um, it, it it has. I was hot, on Saturday when you came, so I was literally hiding in the corner. <laughs> you did. You did seem to be a little bit. But I think that that. Uh I don't. I. I feel like I actually kind of meant everyone could just relax into enjoying the film rather well, than feeling that like there was some big sense of occasion. Preferably, that's one of the things I dislike the most about those opening events, is that I feel that people, you know, they feel compelled to come up and give you their take on it immediately, and I think it's so much nicer if you get to go away and 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 kind of have a think about it and see how it sits and. And then maybe say something if you want to. But I don't like making people feel pressured to give me some kind of compliment on the spot, especially if they're still, you know, processing it. Yeah, ideally you sit with it a while. But I have to say, I do think that what you did with the release and and having the premiere down at Taranaki and then doing screenings in each of the your, your Leeds hometowns and then even the credit of it by a bunch of people and Rachel House, it it has this sense of of you almost wanting to explode it out to to its constituent parts rather than kind of put yourself above it all. That's clearly quite intentional. Very intentional, and I think I, I think probably is more films that should do that. Um, we, you know, we, it's all about audience. It really is. It's a, and it's it's about sharing stories and and collaborating even with audience. So. So I think it's important to ensure that every, it's acknowledged properly. Yeah, I got a bit of kickback for saying that. I was very insistent that we say um, include, you know, a, a film made by heaps of people, including me, because I sort of feel I don't understand why people say a film by one person, but it's never a film can never be made by one person. It's really, I think, stupid. No, I mean, it, it, it definitely like. It, it gave it a very specific. It sets you up for the good. Kind of I'm film glad. I'm get. glad that you felt that way, Duncan. Um, but all that notwithstanding, I, but while I was prepping for this, I, I reread um, a gorgeous interview that you did with uh, Sam Brooks. Uh, oh wow! For the spinoff a few years ago now. Yeah, we were it, drinking beers in the park. Yeah, illegally. It, it, did, it did. Well, <laughs> he, he was trying to make out in the interview that it was legal, but I had a strong suspicion that I couldn't don't think have been so. Sorry. I don't think so. It didn't vibe legal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We only had two each. <laughs> well, um, but the, the, there's some quotes in it which, you know, with the benefit of, of hindsight, were quite poignant. And, and I just wanted you to reflect on where you, you talked about when you first arrived um, down in, in Auckland from Whangarei and that there was someone you didn't name who said that you weren't exactly a movie star and that directing was a bit beyond you. Mm. And I guess I just wondered if there was some sense of vindication here you said, a movie star who's just directed a movie. Well, I mean, that, I suppose if there was vindication, because of course there was, um, it happened a while back. Um, the the other thing, though, is it, it does make you... Uh, grateful like for example this morning I was just talking to my agent and he was saying oh they've this film that I was going off to do after um this work that I'm doing here and he was saying oh they're, they're giving you a bigger role and you never you ne you know that never gets old that feeling of what why that's nice you know so that and I think if maybe if I hadn't um being told those sorts of things because it wasn't just one person 
um, then you know I wouldn't be quite so grateful for 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 where I am now. I mean, it's interesting, right? Because you you know, being told those things, it didn't put you off exactly, but it put you on a, a different path that might never have brought you here. In some respects, do you that, do you think those years acting, directing, and working in yeah, you know, with all of the of what theatre is as a as a community and a practice, you know that it um, you know that it helped forge the way that you came into screens years later. Well, I think what took over. I think like most young actors, I wanted to be famous. Most young actors do. Like they've got that's what the the dream is. I've never had one acknowledge it though. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> don't believe. If anyone says otherwise, they're not telling the truth. I think. But then you very quickly, you know, real life happens, and 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 gaining and you know, looking for employment happens, and also the beauty of theatre is you have you go into these communities and you understand the uh, importance of connecting with community, and then what took over for me was how important stories were. I think I learned a lot doing um, about my culture, um, doing uh, uh, Māori's stories, doing Māori theatre, and it, that took on a whole different purpose or, or, in terms of staying in this industry. And then it kind of just spreads out, I think, naturally, whether it be coaching, whether it be directing, whether it be writing. Um, it's about sharing stories and, and you know, remembering that we are all kind of universally connected, but also that the differences we have, whether it be culturally or whatever beliefs these are um great things to hear and discover and learn about in film is obviously like you know and i think that, that there's there's a lot of you know you can you really feel that in in this project in particular um which i want to kind of dig into but in terms of that that sort of story spe- piece and and sharing of it the the credit is that it it's a it's a story by tom furness and and uh and then was written by by the pair of you, and I wondered if you could talk about that gestation because it does feel like there's some kind of, I don't know, there's something that's in that transition or that that is also kind of part of uh, the the film as it eventually appeared. I mean, it happens all the time in this industry, and whenever I talk about it, I always feel you know like I'm doing something wrong. But honestly, it is a process that happens all the time with scripts. But I do want to say about Tom Furness's script, it was really great. Yeah. Like super adventurous, three little boys, and one of them was battling cancer. It was actually based on one of um, Tom's childhood friends um, who was going through the same thing. And I think this is what they kind of did when they were kids, uh, the, him and his two mates. And this little um, friend of Tom's um, wanted to conquer a mountain, and I think when I read that, the mountain hadn't been named. And I also thought, well, he, here's a wonderful opportunity to name this mountain and allow this mountain to really fill the the story and, and fill these characters. And with Taranaki, you know, the origin story being that these two friends of Taranaki's stopped him from um, going into the sea. Um, I, I thought, what a brilliant parallel it was you know for for Sam who, who I, I made the this, the little boy into a little girl um, but I also really wanted to talk about how we connect with Maunga rather than feel the need to conquer <laughs> and lots of my friends have been through this where they've written this wonderful script and then other people have come along and it's being rewritten but you without know. that, it never gets made. You yeah. know, the thing is frozen in an amber, and that. it's not not touched, but it's also not realised. Yeah, it's true, and it often often scripts do get passed from one writer to another writer to another writer, and then all the way back again. That happens as well. But yeah, it, it was just so when Taranaki was named, um, Bronco became the Bronco. He was particularly when it became a little girl trying to connect with her mountain, I thought, well, what's gonna what what's the scenario for a little girl to want to connect to her mountain is that she's being raised outside of her culture. And um, so in order to really include people in understanding what it is that she's yearning for, I needed to rewrite Bronco to be this little amazing super Māori kaitiaki. 
Yeah. I mean, that's what's what it, it does feel like with those those three those three leads, well, we'll talk about in a second, but also those three characters in terms of the way you've written them, that they represent three different facets of what young New Zealand can, can experience as, as growing up. And to have them all together and expressing their, their different upbringings and perspectives, but also having so much still in common and that, that unifying sense of wonder and adventure and that little magic, you know, that, that feels like a, a Thing that you must have really pressed into into the script. Yeah, because I think fundamentally that's what we all are here in this little country called Aotearoa. <laughs> and well, there's some of the stuff that as adults we can kind of we can find a lot of tension in, and it's weird. Like you see a a, a similar group as kids, and it feels so much more natural the way it's expressed. Was that sort of again intentional in terms of? I mean, you would have written it before the, the summer we've just had, but it and on some level feels like a, a hopeful way of imagining what next generations might do with the same ingredients. Yes. Sorry, ask me the question again. It's not really a question. No, because it was a, no it's a beautiful <laughs> discourse, which I'm far more interested in hearing you talk about. <laughs> but um, my thing is as well is I really want people to come and see this and kind of go through this themselves. I don't want to tell people how to feel. Um, I want them to watch this story and and maybe feel some things that they want to think about <laughs> in terms, and maybe you know compare it to maybe what's going on in the government and stuff well that, that's certainly, <laughs> certainly yeah. what I came well I really yeah I'm chickening out but it's not it's not that I'm chicken I really do want this to feel like it's a story for all of us yeah living you don't want to tell people this country. and that that's what certainly how I what I took away from it was the sense that like a lot of us will feel a relationship to one or one of those characters. Definitely. And uh, Tom Sainsbury um, <laughs> texted me yesterday and said, um, I'm Mallory, FYI. <laughs> and then I texted her back, that makes two of us. <laughs> I mean, I feel pretty Mallory a lot. Yeah. Mallory is a very, uh, very <laughs> sweet, sweet character. And um, I mean, and they, they all are, you got these, these, well, it's weird, right? Like, because I keep thinking, oh, how did you get these amazing um, young actors? Which New Zealand seems to like keep just everywhere pumping out. Yeah, but then at the same time, I was like, well, that's probably rude because you directed them, and I'm sure that the performances that you got from them weren't necessarily the ones they would have given on on first contact. Do, how does your experience, you know, coaching young actors, working with young actors on a bunch of films from your very first kind of screen experiences? You know, how did that feed into the environment you created to to kind of coax what you got out of them? Because it is pretty extraordinary, I think. Well, I think um, the great thing about being in this um, storytelling industry is that if you start closing yourself off, then you're not going to continue to do good work. And so I think you need to kind of retain a a childlike quality um, to really do this work justice. So I, I don't know that I've ever grown up so that's uh, really handy to be working with kids because I'm always the biggest kid in the room. And I think that's kind of what you've... I've, I've also seen Taika be like that. I've seen lots of really great um, directors who work with young people a lot be that way. Um, you've got to always create a sense of play. Um, and in order to genuinely do that, you've you've got to have retained that yourself, I think. I mean, obviously, that those are your young young leads. You had a, a very old one in, in Taranaki, uh, the Monga, credited as an actor, which connects to its status as a as a legal person. A huge meaning to to the iwi and its rohe. Could you describe like how you know how you went about engaging with that aspect of its of its status uh, within the film and within you know the community where it sits? Yeah, I mean, it's something that we've always believed about Taranaki, but it, it, it all just, that, all that legal stuff only just happened last year, which was a really big win and, and um, a wonderful step in the right direction, I think, in, in terms of, you know, in, uh, understanding and acknowledging Indigenous knowledge. Um, we, I whakapapa to, um, to iwi in, in Taranaki, Ngāti Mutunga and uh, Te Ateawa, and so really, that was the place I started. My um, kazi, Miriama um, Kamo, who's a Juno too, uh, uh, she, um, 
she took me down there. I've I've only ever really explored my kaitahu um, side, so she took me to Taranaki and uh, we just walked around and and I connected with a kazi and then that kazi connected me to a whole bunch of other kazis and and then it began. It was pretty standard kazi stuff, <laughs> um, and and it was it was it was a beautiful. It was just so incredibly fluid. I think. In, in regards to the process that occurred, um, I then got in, in contact with an organisation that uh, quite a few of my cousins work uh, with and for called Tutama Wahine o, o Taranaki. They do this extraordinary community, uh, really important work. Leone Pihima is also uh, one of the heads there. And, and so, you know, the, what she's an extraordinary um, leader and, and academic. And we, they really offered to put a kōrowai around the project and rather than asking people to read scripts, we decided we could put on a kind of little show. So we got um, four, uh, three or four actors, adult actors, and, and the rest were adults, so just other adult actors, to, to play the roles and read the script through to any whānau from any um, of the iwi who wanted to come. So that was really cool. It was like um, Kura Forrester was there, Scotty Cotter, Cohen uh, Holloway, um, Stephen Tamarapa, um, a bunch of people. And, and and so it was a really beautiful, intimate reading with, with loads of people. And I think they really understood that we uh, posed no threat um, with the story and that what we were really doing is, is uplifting continuing to uplift um, some of that indigenous knowledge that we have. It's such a beautiful way of sort of, I guess, explaining your intentions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and not and if you don't read scripts, r- trying to read a script for the first time must be like me and Max. You know, it's, it's, it, it looks so strange on the page, I would imagine. So, yeah, it was really nice to just have a little sort of storytelling event did you did you do you feel like you learnt things about the the script through having yeah something like that oh yeah uh-huh. uh, particularly their laughter yeah you right. know where the laughter came in particular but also what what you know what moved them what what it was that um, they responded to and related to we had a big um, kōrero afterwards and and we got all of their feedback and and it was some of the greatest feedback you, you, often as you're doing these sorts of projects you are inundated with feedback from from loads of different people and you kind of have to you know whittle down which what is the most important feedback and that certainly was for me it's interesting right because obviously there'll be some feedback that's wrong you know 100 percent. and and uh and yet there'll be people who've got literal investments or feel like they've got a relationship to it uh you know how do you kind of how how much of this this first time role as as director and obviously your your producers would have been part of this too is is, is almost like <laughs> geopolitics and diplomacy trying to kind of get the thing through on your vision without upsetting all these various interests. Yeah, it's that, and really, I sort of I I really felt um, my producers really coming in around me. But I had to be really clear about what it was. What is it that? What is the vision here? What is it that? What is the story? What is the story here? Because there were loads of people telling us what they thought the story would be. There was always loads of people saying, you know, it's it's a kids adventure film. It needs to be action packed all the time, you know. Um, and I was they they really came around me and supported me in this sort of, um, you know, I set out I suppose to just tell a very gentle story. It didn't have to be wham bam and um, people you know, people almost dying all the time, falling off things. And You know, I just wanted it to be much more really a, a, a kind of meditation on grief as well. That was something that was something I said about it really early on. I think it's become more than that. Um, I think it needed to become more than that. But, it's it's uh, hard, hard sell to kids. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pre- pretty much, pretty much. But I, I did want it to be much more about the, the relationships within the film, particularly the three kids and the Maunga, the four relationships in the film, yeah. Oh, I think you, you succeeded um, very well there. And and I, I love the fact we, we saw it with, um, like, 
I bought two of my daughters and oh, yeah? um, another friend bought two kids and, and I was sort of like, you know, watching it because they, yeah, they could because of the nature of the screening, they were up and down and all over the place. But at the end, they were, they were absolutely thrilled with it. So um, Yeah, we've loved it. The kids just getting up and down, and and you must have seen it because because of the nature of the screenings you've had. They've all yeah, and kids are just you know, but mostly they've been really engaged. Most of the time, the, the only time that, that they've been up and down is to go to the fire park, and then they've kind also of free, run back. Yeah, free chips, free drinks. Come oh, on. <laughs> absolutely, and like you know, the screening of Taranaki, the pre, um, premiere in Taranaki was so wonderful because everyone got given all these really delicious chips and the first sort of 10 minutes was just everyone this m- sound of crunching chips which is very you know it's comforting actually <laughs> yeah it's actually the the second film i've seen the past few weeks after the convert which uses rio Mardi in quite a a way that feels natural and accessible and 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 i don't know so, like somewhat evolved from a, a kind of a typical Either subtitled or, you know, like like a, it's not in a particularly binary way, um, and and that is in large part because of the way it's written, but also performed uh, by Bronco and then also expressed on screen and and so on. Um, do you want to talk a bit about him because he's an incredible performance, but also just he feels like that you know this this like an embodiment of this new generation that we're seeing rise in yeah. within Māori. Yeah. I mean, he, he is Bronco, m- more or less. Um, Terence? Terence is definitely Bronco, more or less. And, and um, yes, exactly that. He is the new generation coming through. He is so at ease. You know, he's he is so at ease in our language and in, in our world, our 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 world view. Uh, he's he's such an incredible young person, and we were just with his school yesterday in Tauranga, and there's a whole school of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? They would they're just extraordinary. I mean, it's it it just yeah, it blows us all away. You know, my generation. It, it's so nourishing, and um, it's it's exciting. The future looks bright. It does feel that way. It yeah. feels that way, and also just an incredible performance. Oh, yeah, he's he's electric on screen. He really is. It, this is this is kind of so obvious that it's trite to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. That that it has a, a sort of kinship in some respects with the the whimsy and certainly the situating hard in the worldview of kind of a pre adolescence. You know, like yep. um, with, with Taika's films, notably. Boy and Wilder people, um, and just that intense sense of mine's like, not as funny. Well, but but also like you said, it's not it's not not trying try, trying to trying to be that. It's trying to have a sense of stillness and maybe yeah, a little bit more definitely, wonder. definitely. Um, but it has that sense of this is how a kid is seeing the world and their obsessions and the the you know like the, all of the the things that make a a, a child's worldview different from from an adults um does the fact that it came from picky and that it had uh taika as as an ep like did that sort of help inform that that sort of sense of kinship are you asking me where i fit into that yeah well because you were obviously you have connections to those productions (laughs) as well you know and um and it's when you've got like credits as an actor but also as an acting coach and you know, Taika's got this enormous presence within New Zealand film that doesn't often necessarily leave room for other people's influence. And I guess I'm just curious about, you know, what we actually see more of uh, of Rachel House and is in, in those movies maybe than 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 uh, history might have remembered potentially. Well, are you asking me if I'm going to make more films like that? Let's just go with that. Then. <laughs> Man, your brain. I love it. No, it's no good. No, it's it's, no re- good. it's so good, Duncan. I just um, was trying to figure out what, how I... Anyway, I yes, I can't of... wait. I, can, I love working with kids. Yeah. Absolutely love it. It's, a, it's pure joy. And directing? Directing kids. Yeah. Yeah, I love directing kids. Again, it's pure joy. There's the, the down... You know, the ups and downs are very clear I think as well you know they if they're if they're fearful about something then they'll tell you 
when adult actors are fearful of something, then they it comes out in other ways. What was the set like when, like, because so much of the action is just the three of them, and they are off in the bush, or at least you know a long way from civilization in some respects. Like, did did could you keep a small set that allowed them to kind of grow into the performances? Yeah, I mean, I I there were some places that we were filming where we had to have a really small crew. And and but but the thing is, it, it because it's Aotearoa independent film. It's not a huge crew anyway, really. I mean, I guess there was about fifty or sixty of us all up, and that sounds like a lot, but it, it's not. The kids and all of the crew. The crew were so stunning. They um, we it, we grew to be a family. You know, the kids wanted to know everything about all the crew members and the crew um, were very, very generous with the kids and loved um, interacting and engaging with the kids. I mean, we literally as a crew had to climb climb up mountains to, to film some of the time. So we were all pretty deeply connected. We had to, um, you know, stay in tents um, up on Poakai in freezing cold conditions, sharing some of the most disgusting portaloos I've ever come across in my life. Although I'm sure that was actually because of us. Who knows? Um, but um, it, it was an extraordinary time that that we had all together. We also had uh, a, a f- exceptional um, acting coach called Carrie Green, who um, will be known to some as an actor, m- maybe known to some as a director. But she is um, a brilliant, brilliant talent, and she's very, very playful and um, worked incredibly well with the kids as well. So she really took the kids off when things were getting a bit hard. And often the time that it takes, the time that takes the most is this is setting up cameras and lights and 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 then when the kids come on, we've got this really small window to to get it done. So, you know, there was a lot of time where the kids had to be um, offset and had to be entertained. The parents as well were just phenomenal and um, they've just committed to this project from the get-go. I can't believe it, how, how much they've given us, actually. And they've been a joy to be around as well. So you do, I think when you work with kids, it's imperative that you form a, a, a family. Otherwise, it's not going to work as well. I'm sure it's been done before. It, I mean, it's just so obvious in their in their performance. Yeah, you know that that they felt sort of held and safe, safe. and able. Yeah. yeah, um, it's it's a weird thing right now because we're we're talking the day before its release. Everyone I I know who's seen it loves the film, and and on, viewed from some angles, there's been a bit of a, a golden period for different aspects of New Zealand screen production. Uh, you know, I think. Uh, with like after the party last year was was yeah. quite extraordinary and and you know there that is there's there is a sense that there's just some projects and some talents that are that are really getting a ride now but then at the same time you have you know you mentioned Miriam Kamu before you know she's Sunday had the team that she's led for some years now looks like it faces oblivion you know News Hub and a lot of three, um, you know, potent, potentially completely disbanding. What is the mood? Because it, it's the there's a paradox, right? You have this some incredible creative expressions, and yet the business side seems a total mess. Like, what 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 is your the mood out there like right now? Well, as I far sort as of you feel, tell? you know, it's it, it feels like it's happening a lot in this country um, where we are being forced to kind of galvanize ourselves into action, and and um, find different ways to uh, retain our um, unique um, and important Aotearoa voices, you know. I I feel really um, hopeful. There's some brilliant films coming out. Josephine Tafu's film, I've forgotten the name, I think When We Were Dangerous or something, a, a really great title, which is escaped my head currently. That's coming out soon. That was just over at South by Southwest. She just won um, a a Best Narrative Director, Best New Director, something wonderful like that. Mickey Mangaseva's um, film is coming out starring the amazing Annabella Politaiva. I feel like, and of course, Robin's uh, fantastic TV series last year. I actually feel like 
um, with a lot of us in the industry. We've we've had enough of the crap. I feel like there's been a lot of crap being made for many, many, many years, and I feel like we're all kind of going, no, I've had enough. I actually want to tell some stories that aren't what we've been asked to do and and just, a, you know, an actual reflection of my worldview and what's going on, what I feel is uh, important enough to, to, to be told or, you know, with, I mean, just Robin's um, incredible form- performance, you know, and her really um, talking about how great it is to uh, create these roles for older women that, you know, otherwise wouldn't wouldn't happen for her, um, in her, in her opinion. But I do think that we're all just kind of we can't be, you know, cancelled. We 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 can't be um, erased. And I feel like from you know what's currently happening where people are trying to erase us on lots of different levels, we will rise up. And I feel like that's what we're all doing and I I do I am um, devastated for what's happened there but I also think that's gonna create something new as well yeah I I think that what yeah what do you think I mean I like I I tend to to have a similar view that these these periods when you're in the middle of them and you're just looking around they can feel awful and and you know and of course but change can feel so awful and and like you said i think there's a danger of over kind of just imagining that the past was just purely great like i I do think for a lot of time we spent a lot of money making a lot of shows that were really a commissioner guessing a little bit at what they thought would maximize ratings and therefore ad revenues rather than this is a creative project that everyone involved has been burning to make. And I think that that sort of risk aversion and let's just try and go for the biggest, broadest all the time actually, you know, paradoxically had a lot of, you know, shrugging audiences and a lot of talent making stuff that they were, they were okay with and I'm sure that they, you know, they liked the check and they, they could convince themselves from a certain angle that it was a thing. But then a lot of the time, it wasn't what they were. They did, they felt like they were put on this earth to do, and and I guess when you know you know it when you see it, and 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 that's why I, I just feel like even now, like sort of six months on, it feels like everyone's still kind of talking about it after the party because it f- had that kind of raw, almost raging sense of the story must come out. Yeah, absolutely, and I, you know, I'm 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 so looking forward to asking Robin quite a few questions but the first one I think I'd like to ask her is how much feedback did you get because I think what happens a lot is there there are too many voices telling Mm. you what to do and what to write and and it can kill it especially in television there's way too many voices telling you um what you should be doing and and I reckon it felt very much like that they had a very strong team who were able to ward off the 15 other people who wanted to have their say about how they thought the script was. That's really interesting. Yeah. Which and is I- something I've experienced. And, and it's it's hard, man. It's hard. Especially when there's money to make the project at the end of it. Yeah, and and the, the 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 money just guarantees your voice. Irrespective the money of sort of yeah, yeah, the money guarantees that you'll get it made. And sometimes it becomes about just getting the thing made mm. rather than getting the thing you really want to make made. So in some respects, because you know there was the you know that uh, project came out of a particular big pot of money that it that came that is now gone, um, yeah. and. So it was less actually about it, the scale of its budget and more the fact that the budget allowed other mezzanine financiers out of the room and so it could be just a singular project rather than, you know, that there's it can feel like there's just a lot of different people contributing and, and that actually just waters it down. That sounds like it's your experience. Absolutely, absolutely. And people who don't really know what they're talking about, <laughs> people who haven't made film or who aren't, yeah, so, so it, it can be very frustrating. I think, sadly, in some ways, and and also cool in others, we're going to have to do a lot more co-productions 
with overseas people. But that doesn't mean that they have to be the big the big ones. It can mean, you know, smaller independent companies that we can come together with. I think to to you know, well, we're going to have to. I think, and uh, particularly at the moment, yeah. And and you know, can you talk a bit about where you're heading, or you know, like in terms of the the next few projects, and you know, if that kind of smaller but more harmonious uh, approach versus something that might have a big glittering budget, but actually is going to be a mess on the story side. Like like, is is that where you'd like to to see yourself head from here? Yeah, I mean, I want to keep making our stories here. Um, like m- most people in my position know, I'm I have to head head over offshore to make some money. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can go and get the bag and then come back and make, make something yeah. small and beautiful. Yeah, in totally. Aotearoa. Totally. All right. Well, um, this is your last interview <laughs> of a long day. So, um, and and uh, I think of of the project for the time being. So, um, I just want to say thank you so much for coming up and Thanks, giving this Duncan. time. Thanks, Duncan. Sorry, I kept getting lost. I honestly, it wasn't your fault. But I really enjoyed your discourse. I thought it was very, very cool. <laughs> Uh, it was me time my own self and not but thank you so much for coming up Rachel I, I've wanted this for a while I'm really glad we got to do it thanks so much Duncan kia ora nga mihi. Mm-hmm.